Welcome again to another class at the Three Angel School of Health. And uh, before we start, I'm just going to briefly tell you what we're going to do today. We're going to do a brief review because I know Johanna wasn't here last time. And then we're going to go, go ahead and look at another remedy. And uh, before we start, let's uh, have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we come before you with the name of your son, Jesus. We are so thankful, Heavenly Father, that you have given us this opportunity this day. And now, dear Lord, as we look at this natural remedy, as we look at your word, whatever we might look at, Father, I ask that you might be with us. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Okay. I'm actually not prepared to teach a class, but uh, but you go by faith when you're in that situation. So before we start, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this every time before my class. I'm gonna do something until everyone has it, and it's something I've done, we've done and gone over, and some of us already know. But I want to make sure Johanna knows it because she hasn't been here. Uh, for a while, and she's missed some missed some classes. So I'm going to erase this German here. Okay, no, that one doesn't work well. Well, thank you, brother. Thank you so much. God bless you. Okay, so Johanna, you've we've seen this so many times now. That's right. Uh, oh, Shane, what's the first one? God we trust. Okay, Johanna, what's the second one? Open air. Okay, I'm just making sure you know all of them. Okay. What about the third one? Daily exercise. Good. Daily exercise. Sunlight. Sunlight. Okay. Plenty of rest. Okay, good, good, good. Lots of water. Good, good, Johanna. I, I'm surprised you know them. You weren't even here. How many of you got plenty of rest this last night? I got enough, I think. Yeah, I have lots of water. Always temperate. Oh, there we go. That's the one I thought nobody would get. And God be trust. No, not the last one. God be trust the first one. Nutrition. 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 <laughs> okay. All right, so you got it. Always temperate. Sorry, that's wrong. Supposed to be in. And the last one is nutrition. All right, so this I, I, is. I know this. I know a song of it. Yeah, you do. You're gonna yeah, have to teach it to me afterwards, okay? So this is, as we said, the foundation. But it's also what we need to maintain good health. But to uh, recover health, we need some natural remedies for some things. So last time, Johanna, you missed a great class last time. <laughs> Tina is smiling. What we did, we did a, a facial salt rub. So we got in partners and we rubbed each other's faces with salt. And it was exciting, and it actually felt good afterwards, especially after showering. No, Your skin felt me, tight, it felt nice. For me, it was okay. like... Oh. All right, one minute, okay? So, so, but that was just the facial salt rub, but what we studied, and we showed you a few videos of the salt glow. Were you here for that? Mm -hmm. You were here? Salt. Yeah, salt glow? Yeah. Okay. And what was the purpose of the salt glow again? To bring blood... Uh, to improve the circulation to bring blood to the surface. Okay, good, good, good. And what else was it? Bring blood to the surface. the lactic acid trapped in the muscles. Okay, good. And there was something else that I'm looking for? Stimulate the circulation. It stimulates the circulation, which is all really good, but uh, it's also really good in releasing toxins because it opens the clogged pores on your skin. 
and you have to you have to open the pores in order for your body to release those toxins. So it's a good good thing when it comes to cleansing the system. Now, after you do a salt salt glow, and by the way, there's one thing missing in these eight laws of health. I noticed. You know what it is? And I have to figure, figure come up with something to add it. I don't know. You don't know what's missing? Let me erase this and let me show you what's missing. Now, it's implied in in things, but there's something that is missing that the Bible emphasizes that is actually part of the laws of health and something you must maintain, you must maintain in order to have good health. And it is this year. Oh, cleanliness. Cleanliness. Cleanliness is what? Someone know? Godliness. Cleanliness is godliness, says Ellen White. But you don't find cleanliness in the eight laws of health. Although it is implied because loss of water means internally and, uh, and externally. But so, does it mean that you... Please uh, raise your hand before you speak, okay? But it says godly trust. It says godly trust, but that's still different. That, that's not what I'm talking about right now. So cleanliness, something you have to, and we were reading about this uh, the last few mornings from morning devotion, is you have to maintain cleanliness if you want to maintain health. And the whole purpose of the salt glow is to clean you up. That's, that's the whole purpose of it. Gets rid of the dead skin. Gets rid of the dead skin cells, opens up the pores, release, releases the toxins. It just cleans you outside and inside. And it is really good. But after you've done the salt glow, there's something that you have to know how to do after you've done natural remedies. And it is, you have to know how to maintain. Because if you don't know how to maintain, you're just going to end up in a vicious cycle. Ellen White says, in the book called Ellen White says, uh, Four ounces of prevention is better than a pound of cure. So you have to know how to maintain. You were going to say something, brother? An ounce of prevention. Uh, is an worth ounce, a pound of cure. an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. An ounce, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And what that simply means is you have to learn how to maintain your health. So after you've done the salt glow, you want to you want to know how to maintain, how to keep clean. So what are some things that you can use to keep clean? And here's a question that I have for all of you guys. A hundred years ago, was the world, did the people did the people shower as often as we shower today? No. no. Were there, what about even before the time of Christ, or at the time of Christ, did the people take a bath or shower as much as we do today? No. no. Were they cleaner no. than us today? Uh, I wouldn't know, so I wouldn't know, but I, I guess you would say no. You would probably say no. But you could then again, you can also say yes. The only thing I know is that they're not clean. It depends because what they have done. Okay. All right. So here's what I'm going to uh, tell you. Remember, what is it that clogs the pores? What did we learn clogs the pores and keeps toxins inside or puts toxins inside? Makeup. Makeup. What else? Toiletries. Toiletries. Cosmetics. cosmetics. But do you know that most of the soap and shampoo you use, most of the soap and shampoo you use, it gives you an outward appearance of cleanliness, but it actually keeps you dirty within? That's true. That is why in today's world, we have more disease and we are more or less capable of dealing with these diseases than they did in the old world. That's interesting, right? They, back then, they had natural things to clean you. They didn't have these chemical soap and that, that stuff. So they were inwardly more clean than we are. 
outward, we are outwardly more clean, but they had better health because they were inwardly more clean. So after you've done the salt glow, you have to know how to keep yourself clean. Now, does anyone know what is the best cleanser when it comes to your skin? Lemons. Lemons. What I have here today, I have lemons. I have two lemons. They don't look too good. Um, I could get you another one. That's fine. I, I can use these. I have two lemons, and we're gonna deal talk about lemons today. So cleanliness is essential to maintain good health, and. Uh, God also gave to Israel many, many, many hygiene laws, right? Isn't that what we were reading about? Laws on how to keep clean. And the one thing is you must keep the pores open on your skin so your body can release impurities. You must keep them open because the whole purpose of the salt glow is to open up the, open up the pores and release the toxins. And one way you can open up your open up the pores for those who would be watching online is a salt glow and you can watch this video it's on our youtube channel uh, as to how to do the salt glow and we would we, we're going to demonstrate that in the future maybe with better quality all right we we looked at some things that clogs the skin and it's very interesting that even most kinds of soap clog the skin now when it comes to your skin one important thing is everything has a pH level. Who here knows what a p what the pH a pH is or pH level? It's the balance between the it's well it's acidic or basic. It's, yes, it's acidic, acidic or basic. The pH scale is between zero and fourteen. Let me draw the line here. Are you sure? Yes. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. And seven is neutral. Interesting. Seven right. Seven. That's right. Seven and anything seven. under seven is acidic. Uh, no, it's basic, right? No, it's acidic. Acidic, right? Sure. Acidic. Base. Anything above seven is basic or alkaline. Yeah. How do you spell alkaline? I think I'm spelling it right. Yeah, I think so. It's alkaline, and your skin has also a pH level. And the normal pH level that is supposed to be in your blood is supposed to be 7.3, 7.35 between 7.45. That's the pH of the blood. But the normal pH level for your skin, what it is supposed to be, is actually supposed to be 5.5 on the acidic level. That's supposed to be about the normal pH of the skin, which is slightly acidic. But here's the thing, if the skin becomes too acidic, it will accelerate the growth of skin cells and it will cause the skin to be scaly and dry and rough. How many of you here struggle with dandruff? Alright? <laughs> I've had dandruff. You've had dandruff? Have you ever seen someone who has flaky skin? Yeah. I mean, I get that when I have eczema. When yeah. It's very strong. Yeah. Yes, because the pH is unbalanced. Mm. So it's too acidic? It's too acidic. It's below 5.5. But this is where dandruff mostly comes from. The reason why you have dandruff is because your skin is below 5.5. It's very acidic. So now, most of the shampoo and the things they recommend you to, to use uh, for dandruff, do you know actually what it does? Oh, cool. Yeah, it, the reason why your skin is acidic is because of the shampoo you're using, number one, and your diet, of course. But the shampoo you're using and the, and the so-called shampoo for dandruff? You can use natural shampoo. Yes, yeah. but a lot of it that you buy at the store, it's more expensive. It's going to keep your skin acidic. You know why? Mm -hmm. They want you to keep having dandruff and buy their shampoo. That's it's not that simple. the natural stuff really expensive at the health store. Exactly. That's, but that's shampoo is called dandruff? Yes. Yes. Excuse me. So dandruff is caused by shampoo 
soap, gel, poor diet, that's actually what dandruff is caused by. Most of the time it's the shampoo you use. And most soaps, they upset your pH balance on your skin. Now, if your skin is too alkaline, your skin will be too moist and oily and will be, have a sickly appearance and it will accelerate the aging process. That is, if it is too alkaline. So here's the question. How does it get too alkaline? Uh, the products you use, your diet can affect it, but that's a good question. I would have to research it some more. How does it get too alkaline? Yeah, your skin. Do you, you have anything? Uh, when you eat too much alkaline food, it, it can, yeah. which doesn't happen very often. No. It would, I, I would think it would tend to be acidic. Especially the little bit in there. Mm -hmm. yeah, most of the food we eat is acidic. Yeah. Now, the question then is, how do you solve this? How do you cleanse yourself? Right here, in front of us, we have the best cleanser in the world. Use lemon. Lemon kills bacteria. It's an antiseptic. Lemon will, it will fight back, it will fight the bad bacteria, and it neutralizes the pH level. So what if you used it like soap and you rubbed it on your skin? Yeah, you know, that's, that's what you can, that's what we're going to look at. That's what the lemon is for. Oh. Press it in, use it like a soap, rub it on your skin, and you can even use the lemon peel, and you can massage someone with it. And it, it's actually, it has, it has some essential minerals in it that your body will absorb through your skin. I heard some people who actually take lemon, I don't know why they would, would do this, lemon with um, salt mm -hmm. and then rub it on it. Hmm. So, a lemon fights bad bacteria, but most importantly, okay, wait, wait, shame, okay? But most importantly, it neutralizes the pH level. Lemon will neutralize the pH level. And when bad bacteria grows, you can tell because, because when you get bad bacteria, you're, you will see your skin get ashy and it will get flaky. That's, that's a sign of some of the bad bacteria. But lemon is an excellent cleanser. And like we said earlier, after you've done the salt, salt glow, you must maintain your skin with lemon. So I would encourage everyone to start using lemon. And at the proper time and season, I will do the same. <laughs> lemon has actu the actual oils that will give the skin the fatty acid that it needs. So, you know... It's not just here where you get nutrition, it's through your skin. So by cleaning yourself, you actually give your, your body nutrition. You absorb stuff through your skin. And lemon has some very good minerals that your skin will absorb very fast. And one of the minerals that it has is, it has a tremendous amount of melanin and other minerals that you will absorb. But another thing that you can do, and I'm going to use this lemon for it to okay. just simply, simply demonstrate. Okay, let me, let me, uh, is just peel the lemon. Now this lemon doesn't have a thick, thick peel. You know, some lemons have thick, thick peel. If you want to cleanse someone, and it will give you actually, it will make you smell good actually. Yeah. Was it like, was it juicy? No, not me. Didn't it? Copy I'll do it with the other one. Sorry, that's my German coming out. Tina speaks German. I speak German. That's just how it is. But take the lemon peel if you want to cleanse yourself, or if you have a partner, and just simply take the pieces and press, and you can massage someone with it. Rub, and it, it will cleanse you, and at the same time, it will give you nutrients. In your body, because this lemon peel has important minerals in it Just that you can sure you press out. Yeah, make sure you wash the lemons first. That's right. That's true. And it's good to have natural, organic lemons from your own tree, even though we don't have that privilege up north. And it gives you a good smell. And this treatment, here's the thing: when it comes to natural remedies, when it comes to natural remedies, 
there's something you will have to exercise. And the reason why God gives us natural remedies is because He wants to develop something in us, and it is called patience. Do you, do you know why natural remedies are not that... Uh, sorry, let me, let me... I can't talk and spell for some reason. Do you know why natural remedies aren't to... Why many people don't use them? Anyone have a effort. guess? Because hmm? they take effort. They take effort, yes. But people want instant relief from their, from their uh, maladies and their sicknesses and illnesses. But natural remedies, you have to have patience. So when, when it comes to cleansing, like if you, if you have ashy skin, it will take up to about two weeks before you will notice the difference if you cleanse with lemon. So you have to have patience when it comes to natural remedies. And the Bible says what? Here is what? The patience. The patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And how you use it? Just simply squeeze the juice out of a lemon and just rub it on you. That's, that, that's, that's, that's simple. And it's a very good antiseptic. That's what it is. And... Uh, The reason people don't like, like I already said, is because they want instant results. But another good, good cleanser is witch hazel. How many have, how many here have heard of witch hazel? I've heard of it before. You've heard of witch hazel before? Have you, Johanna? You've never heard of witch hazel? Orion, have you heard of witch hazel before? You're supposed to be the woodsman. Mm, sounds familiar. Yeah? Is it wood? No, it's not wood. Oh. It's, a, it's a plant. It's kind of a, like a flower. Actually, sounds very familiar. Yeah, you've never seen one. Probably seen one before. So what I will have you do is research it after class. Okay. Witch hazel. And then you can. You, and then I want you to tell us about witch hazel. Okay. Okay. Yes, witch hazel. So lemon is a really good cleanser. And it's an antiseptic, it kills bacteria. But you know another thing that is that lemons are good for? And that's what we're going to look at right now. Lemons are really good when it comes to the eyes. Cataracts. Now cataracts are developed either because, uh, you know, watching TV can give you cataracts. It can give you cataracts. You know what Paul had when he saw the bright light? You know why he was blind for three and a half days? Like scales in his it, eyes. The Bible says it was like scales. But he had cataracts. <laughs> That's what he had. Now, on this treatment, what I would like to do is show how to dissolve cataracts. Because cataracts is simply a layer over your eyes. But you have to dissolve them. Wait, wait. He was actually not blind? Paul was blind for a few days. He couldn't see. No, but and even after he was healed, he couldn't see well. I, he still couldn't see too, too good. But there was a reason for it. And the reason why people have cataracts is simply because they break the laws of nature. Cataracts are the result of diet. It has a lot to do with it. And also, uh, what kind of light do you like? Uh, bright lights will also increase the risk. How many of you can quote Exodus 15, verse 26? Mm -hmm. I'm not, I don't know exactly now, but, um, and do all that he hath commanded you. I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. And the diseases of Egypt are what? The diseases of Egypt are cataracts, arthritis, and diabetes. This is what we have out in the world. This is the diseases of Egypt today. What do you mean? That's basically like any disease. Right? Any disease, really, yeah. yeah. But the most more prevalent one, I guess cancer is one of them as well. But God has never intended us, intended for us to have those problems. If we have these problems, it is simply because we are eating ourselves into these conditions. That's the reason. We are simply eating ourselves into these conditions. The only way you will get healthy is to eat ourselves back into good health. <laughs> is that
Is that the truth? Most of your sicknesses comes from lifestyle. And it's a wonderful profit process. The same avenue that made us sick, that same avenue God uses to make us well. We have to change our method. We have to change our lifestyle. This is what, it, well, this is what makes it so wonderful. If we practice the eight doctors, which you see on the board, we can prevent these diseases. Prevention is key. And if God's people would have practiced these eight doctors, we would have never had to have remedies. Isn't that amazing? God gives us remedies simply because of our hard-heartedness and, and because we suffer as a result of our own, choice, own choices and He seeks to relieve our suffering, relieve the consequences. So God and, he, and it's, he also gave us herbal medicine. But because we violated the laws of health, now we need a helping hand to restore the body so we can appreciate those eight doctors. So before you will learn the value of the eight doctors, I guess I erased it. It's kind of weird. Before you can learn the value of it, a lot of times you first have to get sick. <laughs> That's just how humanity works. All right, so how do we do it? What we're going to do is we're going to juice a lemon. And I'm going to ask for a volunteer, and if nobody volunteers, I'll volunteer myself. I'll volunteer. You? I don't want to, no, I don't want to volunteer you. You're too young. I don't want to ruin your eyes by chance. <laughs> no, okay. But I don't have a syringe here. So what you simply do for cataracts is juice a lemon. Mm, there's actually quite a bit of juice in here. Juice a lemon, squeeze out all the juice. I'm just going to do half of it. Who wants to volunteer? I have no idea how bad it is, so if nobody else wants to. You volunteer. <laughs> Alright, if somebody does it, I'll do it too. Just for the sake of, I'll bear the pain with him. Thinking about it. You're thinking about it? You're on your phone, brother. And are you are you guys looking at the questions on your paper? Yeah, kind of. Mm -hmm. At times. So what's what's the answer to question ten? Do you already have question ten? Yes. What's the answer? Oh, well, we're keeping the laws of health. Amen. We're keeping the eight All right, so now we're doing with question eleven. How can you dissolve cataracts? Now, I'm not quite finished yet. I want to demonstrate. So, the key, the key is lemon in the eye. And I'll show you how to do it a little, a little uh, very soon. But one thing I'm going to tell you is some natural remedies. Can you please sit down? Thank you. Some natural remedies might cause you to suffer a little bit. Mm -hmm. But what does the Bible say about suffering? Suffering makes you perfect. It makes you perfect. And how do we learn obedience? By suffering. By suffering. Go with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. And we're just simply going to show from the Bible that what we're seeing is true. Hebrews chapter 5. Now the reason why I'm sharing this with you is because lemon in the eye is going to sting. It's going to have a, a little bit of a sting, but it, that's fine. You're, you're going to be thankful afterward. Hebrews chapter 5. Notice verse number 8. This is talking about Jesus. Verse number 8. Though he were a son, what did he learn? Yet he learned what? Obedience. Is everyone there? Mm -hmm. Yet he learned obedience, obedience. by what? Through the things which he suffered. By the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Now, one thing is, when you want to help someone else with a certain sickness or disease, you know the most effective person uh, who, can, who can help them. Who's the most effective person? Jesus. Jesus. But, but I'm talking about in earthly terms. What do you mean? Someone who has had has that same disease, or has had the experience. So even though we don't have cataracts, 
at least we're going to know what it feels like having lemon in our eyes. Because if you have that experience, you can share it with him. And you can tell them it's going to be okay. So that and you know helps it. cataracts? No, it helps the eyes in general. To keep it clean, it's actually, it cleanses your eyes. It will dissolve everything. By the way, let me share with you a testimony. Uh, first of all, go ahead, Brother Ryan. Doesn't onions work too? I don't know, I've never read about that. You could research that. I mean, onions Cucumbers. is not as bad. It seems that the lemon is worse. Yeah? Do garlic you know work? I would think onions would be worse. Yeah, because... Yeah, I mean, just at least putting your eyes over the onions. I mean, yeah, so cry. yeah, it makes you cry. But, but I'm going to share with you a testimony. I have a good friend by the name of Garfield. And Garfield is a... He's... He's trained as a medical missionary, and he has never wore glasses before, but his daughter wore glasses from the age of probably around eight or nine. She, she was in grade four. She was in grade four, and she started wearing glasses, and whenever she didn't wear glasses, her head would hurt. So what he did was he, he did a natural remedy, and the natural remedy was for two weeks. Every day, it was every day, right? Yeah. Every day in the morning, they would put one drop of lemon in the eye. And in the evening, they would put one drop of honey, natural raw honey, in the eye. And then for the third week, they would make themselves a cayenne tincture with alcohol. They would let it sit, put, put cayenne in alcohol, let it sit for about 10 days, get the cayenne out through a cloth. Yes, get it out. And then they would use that tincture. And for one week, the last week, the third week, every other day, they would put a drop of the cayenne tincture in both eyes. And they said the pain they felt was indescribable. But it only lasted about 15 minutes. You mean he did that to the daughter? Wait, wait, wait. His daughter and himself. Minutes. Now that's too long now. It only lasted about 15 minutes. And he said afterward, your eyes feel brand new. And her daughter has never wore glasses ever since. No more glasses. No more headaches, no more glasses. The same as my brother Wayne. Every time he doesn't wear his glasses, his head Yeah, that's right. Okay. So, it works. There's a testimony for you that it works. And if you want, I can give you their phone number if you want to try this. And they can describe to you better what to do and how it feels. Because they have experienced it. So... It's gonna hurt a little, but what the lemon, what this lemon in the eye does is it triggers circulation. It brings circulation to it, and it's gonna clean it out. Yeah. And what does the Bible say? Poor. Let me let me write it here on the board. Okay. So we talked. We already talked about the skin, that uh, and the pH level, and how you have to maintain cleanliness. Poor equals what? Poor life. Poor life, but it equals death. Because uh, life is in the blood. Yes. Poor, circulations, poor circulation equals death. Because the life of the flesh is in the blood. So, to get better health, you have to increase your circulation. One way you can do that with your eyes is lemon. But the main cause of poor circulation is diet. So you have to change your diet as well. You can't just do the remedy and not change your diet. Now, it varies with different, pe different people. Poor circulation is death and circulation is the key of life. And what you want to do is to bring more circulation to the eye. You want to dilate those capillaries to the eye you want to bring more blood flow to the eye, and in doing that, you can rid yourselves of cataracts. Many, we're all familiar with the story of Paul, right? Yes. When he was traveling to Damascus, he was struck with what? God's light. A bright light. And what, what was the result of that light? What was the result Blindness. of the light? Blindness. Blindness. He turned blind. And after a period of time, he received a, mar a marvelous cure. 
And through that process, the cataracts or the scales, they fell from his eyes and he could see. And you know, you know, you know another thing, you know how to, one thing that causes cataracts is actually TV. You know, I thought the diet in Africa, when I was in Africa, they have a good diet, like natural food, ground, ground foods, yam. But I saw people with cataracts, but you know why? They watch lots of TV there. In Africa? In Africa. Yep. Oh, in, the, in the cities, in the towns, every house has TV. TV, they might not have food, but they will have television. <laughs> that might be the first thing they buy. Yeah, that's, that's how it works. And it, it's, it's no good. So it's actually, when watching t TV, we duplicate the process. And the television, it's a, it's, it's, the television set is high in ultraviolet rays. That's why it is. So too much time in the sunlight can also cause it. It's ultraviolet rays. That's why, it, that's why the Bible says it is good for the eyes to behold the sun, but only in the morning, not in the middle of the day. It's harmful. And our eyes, they're abused by the light. And because of that abuse, our body is simply trying to protect us. Do you know cataracts is actually a good thing? I guess that's true because... It's simply the body's effort to protect your eyes. That's what cataract really is. Does fly yeah, it's good for me that I've been afflicted or diseased and exactly. I'm like statutes. Amen. Amen. So so it's basically like it's kind of it's it's from a bad so God turns something from something bad into good basically, mm -hmm. in that sense. Because you're doing exactly. something to yourself that is wrong and you know everything has a cause and effect to it. And so the the cause of the cataracts is because you're watching TV. And by mm -hmm. watching TV for a long period of time, and you get cataracts, that's to help you, even though you were the one that did it to yourself. <laughs> yes, exactly. So you won't watch TV anymore. That's the reason why. Exactly. Uh, one thing you can do is wear sun sunglasses when it's in the middle of summer. I usually don't. But uh, it would help. Sunglasses. I thought sunglasses were good for you. I don't know. It probably depends what kind of lens you have. But it's but cataracts is simply nature's attempt to protect us, and it's a uh, and many things are that way when it comes to disease. Disease is also simply nature's attempt to release your body of toxins. So now let's try it. O'Shane, can I have a chair? Who wants to be the volunteer first, or do you want me to do it first? You're already looking at me. Okay, can I, can I have a chair? Don't do it to me. Okay. I'll do it to you. Think about it. I won't do it to you. If you don't want to, I'll do it. If not, you can drop a drop in my eye. I'll drop a, I can drop a, a drop in your eye. Who wants to be volunteer? Who wants some lemon in the eye? It's going to sting a little bit. Oh wait, hold up, you said, a, you said a little bit. Yeah, you want me to do it first and then I'll do it to you? Is it going okay, to sure. I would like... Shh, can you, can you please... Settle that. I would like everyone to experience it because you never know if you might have to do it to someone else. I want to experience it. Alright, I'll set forth the example. Tina, I know you have gentle hands. I don't have a dropper, I don't have a syringe. I have this. Drop a drop in my eye. Okay, well, we'll just put a little bit in so we don't... <laughs> All right, so what I did, I simply juiced half of a lemon. I have a little bit of lemon juice here, and I'm just going to simply drop it in the eye and make sure you don't have a seed. What the fuck? Don't. Fo <laughs> make sure you don't jump. <laughs> I, won't, I won't jump. So it's probably best to just tilt your head back and to keep it back for a while, just a drop. Yeah, I don't have okay. Um, you, you, you might have to, because I'm going to automatically close my eyes, you might have to force my eyes open. open. Yeah. Okay. You, want, you want to hold it? <laughs> Did it get your eye? Yeah, it's in my eye, all right. <laughs> I can't open my eye now. <laughs> does it hurt? Yeah, it stings. Yes, it does sting. Ooh, I just opened my eye and it stings. 
Well, yeah, you got shampoo in your eye. You've got anything like that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So it's, it's, wow. Okay. Oh, if it's as bad as shampoo, I mean, sure, I'll try it. I'm pretty sure it's worse. Yeah, it's worse. Come on. I hate shampoo. Well, I, I do use it. Don't get me wrong. But does it hurt? When, you, when I open my eye, it hurts. Yeah. But once you dropped it in your eye, did it hurt? Yeah, it, 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 it just stings. It stings. From now on, you'll be one-eyed Willie. Really. Uh, no, no, maybe actually, teaching class with one eye. <laughs> well, we're testing this natural remedy. So. Willie, try opening your other eye. Remember, by suffering, we are made perfect. Yes, suffering. Every time I open this eye, it stings. Woo, it stings. Well, maybe run it out to get it dry. Well, like, I'll remove the scales from your eyes. No, brother, this is good for your eyes, brother. It brings the circulation and I can feel it, all right? I'm sure. Why you all rather drink I can feel it just watching you. Know? You're almost like Mars, come on. Are you okay? It's good. I, all right. I try to open my eyes, but every time I open my eyes, it stings a lot. Next. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a few minutes. I eat for beauty. All right. <laughs> Your, your eyes gonna be red because yeah, my eye is gonna be red for a while. And if I do this eye red away, I won't be able to see for a while because. But Louis, I, I no, but, but Louis, I mean, when you just dropped it in your eye, did it hurt? Yes, it is. Well, not that. No, it doesn't hurt at the drop, but it's just when it sinks in, it stings. There we go. See, that only lasted about five minutes. The pain yeah, is gone. Just... <laughs> there, the pain your is gone. Your eyes are red. That only lasted. This eye is right. Both well, of them. It Both should be red oh. because of the yeah. circulation. The circulation yeah. to it. That's the the life coming back to the. Amen. Although I know you're so, really, although you really want to do it to me just so that my cataracts can go away. All right. So this is what you do to dissolve cataracts, and now I'm gonna do my other eye too, and then afterwards someone sure? else is gonna do it. Yes. You want to do your other? You, both of your eyes are red already. I mean. Yeah, because I have to squeeze and squeeze and Yeah. Okay. Okay. The pain only lasts but a little while, and that is a good lesson for us when it comes to the Christian experience. Pain will only last for a little while. A weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And see, no more pain in this eye. It's gone, and it actually feels really good right now. Are you able to open this eye when it happens? Not when it happens. When it happened, it was kind of hard. Uh, yeah, all good, all good. Yeah, it says, it says, it says, a, li a little suffering is all right, but it is only for a small moment. So just tilt the head back, and we take the lemon and drop it in the eye. Now scrunch your eye up real tight and just bear with the pain a little bit, and it's going to be all right. <laughs> and that's what I just experienced. And the purpose is... Circulation, how much do you have? Just one drop? Yeah, like a drop. Okay, okay, good, good. That's good. All right. Let me, let me, just, let me just read this to you. Uh, by the way, disease is our friend. Uh, nature is simply saying, I love you so much that I will try to do something to assist you to I mean, aid you in recovery. When you do this treatment, you drop one drop of lemon in the eye in the morning and one drop of honey in the eye in the evening. But what is not, but th that is not the whole treatment. These simple remedies are just some local treatments to deal with local processes. The application of the eight doctors is the main treatment. So after you do this, you have to make sure you bring the person in harmony with the eight laws of health to maintain their health, to improve their health, because if they don't, it's just going to come back. Devils will always come back. Sickness and disease will always come back if you don't change. Mm -hmm. Read Matthew chapter 12. I think it's 12. These local treatments are dealing with the symptoms. So this, okay, this takes the place of drugs. Remember that drugs can't cure anything. This cannot cure anything. It helps you cope so that you can make it to the next day. All right. Honestly, I don't want that to happen. All right, let's do the next eye. Uh, yeah. Did I just see you know the lady that I played in your eye? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got it? I got it. 
it. Is it the lead that came with me? Is how you see your guy? He's actually that man's sister. <laughs> they said I could scrunch my eye clothes after, so that's what I'm gonna do. Suffering may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Yes. It stings, all right. But it only lasts about five minutes. If you scrunch your eye, the pain is more intense. But if you open it, it's intense. Move the eye around if you can. Move it around? Yeah, like that. Mm. To make it um, go everywhere. Mm. Do you really want to do that to me? <laughs> no, I don't want to do it to you, little Shane. Yeah. You might. You might tell your mommy what they did to you. <laughs> you tried putting no, some you, lemon in my hand. You know what I'm going to tell mom to do one day? I'm literally sleeping to take honey, lemon, alcohol, with Kanye, and pour it in the balloon's eyes. You only, you're supposed to do one thing at a time. You know, I'm going to tell to mix all them together, pour the balloon and then you make them like this. Okay. Yeah, please, please keep quiet. Alright. See? That was probably not even five minutes, was it? <laughs> Both the eyes are red. Yeah. Next. <laughs> Next. <laughs> but it's going to feel good afterwards. Sure will. So now we got to do honey in the evening. Alright, who's next? Huh? No, he can stop the recording. Stop the recording? Yeah. Now you know how to do it. Uh, there's a little bit more afterwards. Alright, who's next? Does anyone else want to try it? I want to try it.